Okay, we're uh, back. Uh, I'm going to uh, adjust the camera just a little bit by moving it over here and zooming in on this spreadsheet. Uh, I'll move the camera just a little bit more. Um, now what we have here is the spreadsheet and I will make this available on Sakai. Uh, and what I did was I took the, um, the example from your model and I uh, actually uh, worked up a spreadsheet to parallel the example that's in the lecture. Um, and so uh, when you look at uh, this example here, you can see that I created uh, the different uh, popcorn types here, and I created the attributes across the top, and I just entered in the values based on what I was given in the assignment. So those values there are all pretty precisely what we saw in the assignment. Uh, the next thing I did, and I, I promised you that I would do this, is I went down to um, to create these uh, rows here where I need the best and the worst. And I did, as I promised, use the max and min function. So notice that for the cost, uh, if you can see up here, I know it might be hard to see, it says equal the minimum of B5 through B10. So it pulled out 21 out of this function. Um, if I drop down to this, you'll see that it'll say equal to max B5 through B10. So for the worst, it pulled out the highest score. And I did that all the way across, except I remembered when I got to percentage edible to make uh, the best criteria be max and not min. So, uh, and I can just show you if you can see this, I'll just tab across. You can see a minimum for calories is the best. Minimum for sodium, sodium is the best. Now you see up here, it went to maximum as the best for edible and maximum as the best for taste. Now, uh, when you go down to uh, the next uh, function that I did, uh, I, uh, as promised, I, I used uh, the rankings. I, I came up with rankings. Actually, the article gave the rankings to us. So I just entered the rankings, one, two, three, four, five. Um, in terms of calculating the raw weights, uh, those are just values that were entered into the system. And so remember the values of the raw weights run from 10 to 40, um, 10 being the, war, uh, the lowest raw weight for the least important factor and the highest raw weight for the most important factor. And then everything is gonna run between 10 and, and 40. And so you can see that uh, I've got 35 and 40 for one and two. Uh, I've got three sitting sort of uh, not quite in the middle, really more towards 40 than 10. So it really tastes a little bit more important, not exactly in the middle. Um, but you can see percentage edible is only five points higher than uh, than the serving cost. So again, just as the article said, uh, I assigned these arbitrary spread of points uh, just to uh, go through the different criteria. And the arbitrariness has to track with the ranking that was done first. So that was done. And then I used a formula that I'm that I was given in the book. Um, I uh, took um, B19, which is 10, and I divided it by 130, and I came up with 0 0.077. And I did the same thing. I just copied that formula across. Uh, I, I divided 40 by 130. Uh, I got 30.8. 30 uh, 30 and when you go all the way across and you add those, uh, they all add up to one. So these are my new weights, right? This is 7% for cost, 30% for calories, 26% for sodium, 11% for percentage edible, and 23% for taste, adding up to 100% of my total weights. So uh, through this process of, of ranking, um, coming up with raw weights, and then using uh, a little bit of uh, easy math, I came up with the unitized weights, or the actual weights that we're going to use in the process. Uh, the next thing we did, just as we were told to do in the article, is we came through and we, we scaled um, the criteria that was that we were given initially, and I did it using the formula. So let me just go here and show you that this is a, the formula that's given to you in the article that you have. And it basically takes uh, the original uh, price or cost of Newman's own, uh, it subtracts it from the uh, best cost and it comes up with zero. And so that's that. what this little formula is here at the top. It's exactly the formula that, you're, that is discussed in the reading for the week. And so each of these were created using the formula. And the formula just takes and rescales everything from being the worst being um, low. Well, it rescales everything so that everything is uh, uh, 
running on the same direction, zero being the worst and 100 being the best. So that's uh, what we did here with this process. We've kind of taken away the original uh, numbers that were both a mix of qualitative and quantitative, and we put them all into this quantitative uh, formatted model. Then very simply, we came to here uh, and we multiplied uh, the weights, the unitized weight times each of the values to get this, uh, did the same thing to get this. And so uh, by multiplying the unitized weight, just like we did in uh, assignment one, part two, I've got my new weighted value scores. Uh, I've aggregated the scores over here to, to numbers, and then I converted the numbers uh, into ranks with the highest. Remember, remember when we did um, this here, we said the lowest, zero is the lowest and 100 is the best. And we brought that down. So now the best is still the highest. So now I've got 54 being the highest and number one. And so Orville Redenbacher's uh, Gourmet Popcorn ranks the number one based on the criteria I have and, and based on this, um, this model that we've used. Uh, I have another tab here for uh, sensitivity analysis. What I did on sensitivity analysis uh, was I copied the tab to a new tab. I adjusted the, uh, the raw weights and by adjusting the raw weights, changing uh, the initial raw weight here from 35 to 38.5, I wanted to see if the rankings change and in fact they do not. And so there's no change in the rankings here. And then finally, uh, I wanted to prove to you that you couldn't just take uh, when you have a mix of quantitative and qualitative data and it moves in different directions, that you couldn't just multiply the values times the weights and get and get something that makes sense. So I actually did that. I actually uh, have the weights here. I took the weights that we computed before. I multiplied the weights times each of the values. So you can see uh, down here, um, let me go down a little bit. You can see that if I multiply uh, the cost times the weight, I get these different values here. Calories times the weight, and then when I try to add these up, I get these different totals over here uh, and I get completely different rankings. But in reality, those rankings don't mean anything. They don't mean anything because um, some of these weights uh, have a logic that says um, the lowest value is best and others where the highest value is best. And so when you get this, it's really nonsense. It's really uh, not a logical uh, result or conclusion, but I just wanted to prove it. I wanted to prove it to me and I wanted to prove it to you. And if I just use the technique that I used in the very first uh, um, lessons, uh, that uh, the technique would not work when you have data that, that shifts in terms of its directional attributes. And, and that's going to be very common when you have decision-making problems. So I hope this has been helpful to you. I am going to make uh, this spreadsheet available on Sakai as well uh, so that you can uh, take a look at it. Uh, and you can uh, play with it a little bit as you read through the reading assignment. So I hope this has been clear for you. I hope you understand the difference between what we did originally in assignment one part two when we did uh, weighted scoring and what we uh, have done here with a more complex MEL model, which includes these techniques for smoothing things that move in different directions. So hope it's been helpful to you. Um, don't hesitate to ask questions when you get to the MEL model assignment. Uh, thanks and have a good evening.